Hey everybody, what's going on? Coming to you today with a video, uh, more strictly speaking about college football, not the video game, but in real life college football. Uh, something we're going to be doing on the channel uh, occasionally, and especially when we get into the season, definitely be uh, doing that. I got a new hat. I'm not wearing the Pokemon hat this time. We went and I had to get a new clean hat and I had moved a couple years ago and man I used to have 10 Alabama hats and now I have um <laughs> and now I have uh none well now I have one anyway so I don't know what happened to it they were all probably old and dirty been worn too many times but I uh, finally got a new hat so y'all don't have to see my bald head when I do live cam here on the stream but I wanted to take a look at this article I actually heard uh just a few minutes ago I was listening to Paul Feinbaum and uh, heard Alex Scarborough on, who obviously works for ESPN here. We're looking at the article. Got it up right here. Tampering has arrived in college football, and it looks like NBA free agency. Well, we'll get into it here, but technically the NBA has rules for tampering. I'm not saying that those rules aren't broken, but I don't think college football really has any rules for any of this transfer portal stuff. It is... You would think it would be something along the same lines of the recruiting, uh, but obviously there would have to be some differences because you're basically, and they use the word in here, poaching, but uh, just look at some of the uh, quotes and some of the highlights of this. Uh, it's unbelievable how many coaches were reaching out to players on his team's roster. Uh, cheaters, the frustrated assistant said, the cheaters just keep cheating. And, uh, you know, so he's using this article as a way to, you know, show this narrative of, you know, the lawlessness, basically, that's maybe always gone on in college football. But the, the bigger point here is that we really got to start talking about as college football saying the NCAA, it doesn't mean anything. The NCAA, in a lot of ways, has be, been more defunct than defunct, like as far as their ability to actually enforce any kind of rules or anything it's become fewer and far between and you know even when they do do something it's years down the road from the and you know it only hurts the players that are there you know and the coaching staff that's there five years down the road or something and then they're you know it's the whole way they've always done it isn't really fair but what else are you going to do who else are you going to punish uh, you know, nowadays they just don't punish anybody. And, you know, it goes on in this article and we were talking about this in the, uh, video I did about how I wanted transfers to work in the game. And I said, like it or not, which you don't have to like it, but it's going to be a part of the game. So it probably needs to be a part of the college football video game. And I said, well, you wouldn't want to be doing it throughout the season because then it would come off like poaching. Well, I guess maybe, it would be realistic if they put it in the game that way, but, you know, probably would send the wrong message. I think they did that in the game a few years, uh, several, several years ago, obviously, because it's been several years since we've had a video game. But you have to, I remember one time players could actually get in trouble and you had to like either like suspend them or do something or you could get in trouble with the NCAA. I think that was in the video game for like one iteration and they took it out because it kind of makes college football look bad like when you have to do those sorts of things and I don't think they wanted that implicated with them so they I think they either asked them to take it out of the game or it just wasn't a good system I don't know what it was but I have a feeling that the NCAA and the colleges probably didn't like the kind of negative aspect that went with that game mechanic but uh, I was kind of looking at it from that angle and I called it you know the wild west and they say it right down here as well and that's exactly what I said uh, on that video the other day. It's uh, the wild, wild, wild west. Uh, they're talking to high school coaches where the player originally went to high school and now they're at a college and now they're asking the coach, is he happy? You know, and things like that. It's just crazy. Um, and then you have another quote here from an ACC assistant. You have teams trying to poach kids. There's a lot of shady poop going on. Uh, yeah, I mean, and that's the NCAA. It's it's like in name only. It's like a, it's just the company name, how they can draw business in. 
the NCAA does not seem to have any want to motivation or anything like that to actually want to enforce any kind of rules anymore. I don't think they can. And to be honest, the, to think that they run college football at this point or that, like they have some kind of superior oversight. I'm sorry, they don't. The Power Five conferences and the people leading those conferences and some of the big, you know, from the big programs like, you know, like at Ohio State or somebody like that, like they're athletic directors and people like that. They're the ones with the voices in the room and the ones saying what can go, will you know, and what can't go. In my opinion, they they have so much influence. They might not be the one writing the letter into the law, but you know they're in negotiations with these TV contracts that they're doing all over the place. Like, of course, they have a say. So there's got to be there's somebody behind it, and you got to believe that it's those code. And it's not people who work for the NCAA. It's the big time colleges, and it's the conference. You know, the conference commissioners. And, and, and basically the power five conferences, they, they rule college football at this point. I mean, and that's, you know, you can see that from so many facets in this transfer thing is just another one of them. And I mean, you even had here, Nick Saban, he's saying in 2017 was trying to advocate for a rule of civility. So no tampering would go on. He says they have rules in the NFL. I think we should have rules for like that in college football. Guess what? It's not even really tampering because there's no rule against it. So like you're not breaking a rule. You're not tampering because they haven't said that they haven't defined what tampering is. There are no rules for this. Like the poaching is basically 100% legal. It is the Wild West. It's just, it, it's not even like the NBA. It's worse than the NBA. I mean, I know those guys, the players and stuff, try to get each other to come. You know, LeBron talks to Dwayne Wade and whatever else. Yeah, that, that happens, and they really can't stop that. It's not, you know, it's supposed to be the owners and GMs and stuff like that can't talk to the players and staff members. Oh, yeah, we know it probably happens, but at least there's a rule that it's not supposed to happen, uh, you know. And then let's see what the, another SEC coach here uh, from Missouri, he says that the he scoffed at the idea of NCAA oversight, and this is exactly what we're talking about. Uh, it would need to open investigation, he said. And what good would that do when they still haven't punished coaches implicated in the FBI's investigation of college basketball? Exactly. Like, there's no tooth to this bite that the NCAA has. The NCAA is not in a position of power to hand down any penalties, basically, at this point for, for stuff like this. Like, when's the last time you heard about, like, major recruiting violations you used to hear about it like it seemed like there would be three or four teams going on probation you know 20 years ago you just don't hear any oh you think everybody's just cleaned everything up you know the coaches are you know there aren't people you, you hear about secondary violations like they've self-reported secondary violations and you know and then what is it like they get like basically a slap on the wrist i mean when's the last time you've heard in the last five years, how many times a big college football program has lost any scholarships? I feel like USC is probably one of the last teams to like lose scholarships for stuff. And I mean, that goes back to the Reggie Bush stuff and that took them 10 years to figure it out. And all it does is hurt the program and the kids that are there now. And if something like that was to happen, you can bet. I mean, that's, it would almost be like the death penalty for some schools. Cause they're just going to be like, well, we could always transfer before when something like this would happen. They would, the NCAA would give them some kind of, you know, transfer way out because, you know, the school and this and that. Now with the transfer portal, you don't even need an excuse anymore. And this all started by the waivers. The kids were getting waivers like, oh, he should be imme immediately uh, eligible. Blah, blah, blah. Too many words. Should be immediately eligible. So you're getting lawyers involved. And then it just became, well, they're going to give everybody this, so why even get the lawyers involved and waste this time? We're just going to let everybody just transfer and do what they want. And that basically, they opened the floodgates last year. They opened it up before they had, you know, any rule sets. It would be like releasing, you know, an online video game with, like, everything is there and you can do everything, but there's, like, no security in the game and 
basically you could tell the server to do whatever you wanted it to do and there's no repercussions for it because they can't stop you there's no limits to the game oh i got that item just you know you can basically hack the server because there's no authentication uh on server side from a game like that That that's basically what they did they said oh here here's a new mechanic you can use this the transfer portal kids can use it coaches can you you can programs can use it and then where are we at you know like there's no rules behind it and i'm not even really i'm not i'm not even suggesting I mean, obviously, I think poaching from other teams like during the season, things like that, before the person's actually in the transfer portal, maybe they could, maybe it could be like the NBA draft or something or like the NFL draft. Like you could say, well, are there any teams interested in me before I put my name in the transfer portal? But I've seen kids come back out of the transfer portal anyway. In this article, if you read it, it, it's pretty much, and I heard Alex Scarborough say it on Paul Feinbaum, he pretty much says the kid knows that somebody's interested in him. That's the only reason he's entering the transfer transfer portal to begin with. So my point on this is like, it's it's basically my big point on this is something we already knew. Like it's not some big proclamation, but it's just another straw on the, you know, breaking that camel's back because I mean, the camel's dead and on that. I mean, we're beating a dead camel at this point. It's not even a horse anymore. The camel's dead and we keep putting pieces of straw on top of it. And it, <laughs> the body's just disintegrating at this point because the NCAA is not what they used to be. I, it almost leaves me speech. I don't even know how to define it. They are just basically a name so we can collect money from revenue and, and things like that. I mean, maybe in the other sports, but when it comes to college football, it's obvious the NCAA has absolutely no bearing when it comes to punishment, oversight. They might try to pretend like they still do, just but it's a it's like a facade. It's just this thing like, oh, it's still out there. You know, it's kind of like when I used to work construction, everybody would always talk about, and I'm sure they do show up places, but everybody would say, hey, you can't do that OSHA violation. And I was like, oh yeah, I saw them here yesterday. Meaning I never saw an OSHA employee in my life now i'm sure i'll get some beat back on that because i'm sure osha does show up places but it's like it's this looming figure well they could show up and we could get in trouble but we're probably not unless something bad happens you know that would be the only situation bad analogy maybe but i mean yeah it's the wild west in college football anymore and man unbelievable um but i mean this this article it's not even it's not even eye opening. I mean, we we knew it was going on. I mean, you wouldn't even have to have been told anything and just ask the question. Do you think coaches are trying to poach and tamper with players before they're even in the transfer portal because they noticed they weren't getting play in time or this, that, the other? That coaching staff got overhauled. Maybe they don't want to be there anymore. We had a good relationship with them when we were recruiting them and we just missed out. And then, you know, whether they're talking to the high school coach or whoever they're talking to to get this information, they're not supposed to be talking to the kid. I guess that is in the rule. Like, I, I don't know. I've, I've yet to see where, like, there's a list of rules, like, on what they're actually supposed to do. It doesn't seem like there's really anything in writing. Maybe there is, but it's probably one sentence. But even if they do implement a rule book, who's going to enforce it? Certainly not going to be the NCAA. So, anyway, guys, uh, that's it for this video. I'm going to probably do uh another what i want from the college football game we'll do another one in that series in one of the next videos and then uh i just have to edit some of the nebraska rebuild and the commentary on that so we'll get around to that but i just saw this article is a little interesting and i always like to complain about the ncaa and how it's just it's a facade it's it's a myth it's a legend it doesn't really even exist it's just it's just some corporation that they use for financing purposes at this point is the way I look at it because they ain't running it. They ain't running things, that's for sure. So anyway, guys, that's my opinion. Tell me what you think. I know college football is a sore subject and a lot of different opinions out there, but I think we all, I think most fans can kind of agree that the organization that is the NCAA, there's not always a lot of good things to say about that. You know, uh, we can get into what teams are cheating and what conferences are cheating in a different video, but, oh uh, man, just a big overview there of it. So anyway, 
like, subscribe if you guys want to. I'll see you later next time.